On day one, I spawned in as Godzilla. Haha, -ha, check me out. I am so tiny. Look, I only have five hearts. I was so surprised, I almost didn't notice a scientist sneaking up behind me. I've got you now. The scientist started throwing nets at me, barely missing. Whoa, who is this guy? I've got to get out of here. The scientist continued to chase me, throwing nets. Up ahead, I could see a small hole, so I hurried and jumped inside, landing in a small cave. He's too big to fit, so I should be safe in here. Just then, I heard a rattling sound, and there was a rattlesnake right there. Oh no! I jumped back out of the hole right next to the scientist. There you are, you little lizard. I ran off as he kept throwing his nets. I was running out of places to hide. That's when I had an idea. I hope you don't like getting wet, and I hope I know how to swim. I dove into the ocean and was happy to find that not only could I swim, but I could swim extremely fast. It looked like the scientist wasn't interested in diving in after me either. I'll get you. What a start to the day. Who was that guy? Why would he want me? Maybe he was just trying to capture all the animals. I decided to ask a nearby fish if he knew anything. As I was swimming, I realized I could breathe underwater too. Hey, did you see that guy back there? What's his deal? The fish didn't respond and started attacking me. It was a barracuda. Hey, stop it. I don't want to hurt you, but I will. The barracuda didn't say anything and kept attacking. I guess he didn't know how to talk. Well, let's see what these claws can do. I swiped him with my claws and saw that I packed a punch. It only took a few hits to take him down. I was strong enough to get out of that fight, but he was just a little fish. I don't know if my claws will help me out of something much bigger. I was feeling tired after such an eventful day, so I made my way back to the shore to look for a place to rest. Hopefully I wouldn't run into that scientist again, but just in case, I needed to start getting prepared to fight. On day two, I woke up and crawled out from under the tree. Today's the day I get set to fight back. If I was going to survive, I needed a safe place to live. I didn't know where that scientist was operating from, so I didn't feel safe building a base on land. I decided my best bet was in the water. Before I can get to building, I need the tools to do it. I immediately got punching some trees so that I could get some wood. With the wood, I made a crafting table and fashioned a pickaxe. Then I mined out some stone and used the stone to make a set of stone tools. A pickaxe, axe, shovel, and sword. With my new tools, I started gathering the materials I would need. Building a base out in the water was going to be an interesting challenge, but I think the final build is going to look really cool. While I was gathering some supplies in the forest, I saw a boar off in the distance. I don't think that barracuda could talk, but maybe this boar could help me out. I made my way over to him. Hey buddy, have you seen a scientist roaming around? The boar took one look at me and charged. Oh come on, I was just trying to figure out what's going on. This guy was hitting pretty hard, and I took quite a bit of damage. It's a good thing I had made myself a sword. I'm sorry for bothering you, but now you're just being rude. I used my sword and took him down. All right. Right, looks like I'm the only talking animal out here. Let's get back to work. I managed to gather a bunch of other materials and even came across an old boat. There were a lot of materials to grab, so I got as much as I could so my vision could come to life. I headed into the water and found a good spot to build my base on the seafloor. Using the materials I had gathered, I built a platform and started putting everything I would need together. It was going to be hard for the scientists to find me down here. I was able to make some really good progress, but I'd need to go find some more materials tomorrow. On day three, I needed to get some more supplies, so I headed over to a nearby mountain. I made my way up to the top of the mountain and saw some watermelon. I went ahead and harvested them when suddenly I heard a strange noise. Huh? Where did that come from? I'm not letting someone sneak up on me again. I looked from side to side but didn't see anything. Maybe it was just the wind? What's that? I looked around just in time to see a giant bird swoop down and pick me up. Hey, let me go. What's the big idea? She didn't seem like she was trying to hurt me, but where could she be taking me? After a moment, I could see something huge in the distance. It was a giant nest. Uh-oh, I must be food for her babies. Moments later, the bird dropped me into the nest, and luckily the babies hadn't hatched yet, but I could hear something moving inside of the eggs. I had to get out of here. Hi, you. Who was that? I turned and saw a little squirrel standing there. Hey, you could talk. I was starting to think I was the only animal here that could. Yeah, yeah, I can talk, but you hear that? These eggs are starting to crack, and we gotta get out of here. You're a squirrel. Can't you just climb out of here? The nest is made of mud. I can't get a good grip. If you can dig us out with your claws, though, I have a good way to get us to the ground. The eggs started making even more cracking sounds. We had to hurry. I started swinging my claws and managed to break through the walls of the nest. Oh man, that is a long way down. I hope you know what you're doing. The squirrel tossed me an umbrella. Suddenly, there was a big crack and we heard some baby birds starting to tweet. Jump! The squirrel and I jumped off the nest and slowly floated down to the ground. Whew, that was a close call. I've been having a lot of those lately. Don't tell me. Did you run into that scientist too? Yeah, what's that guy's problem? He's been trying to round up all the talking animals. All I know is anyone he captures is never seen again. He must be experimenting on them or something worse. I could tell the squirrel must have lost some good friends to this scientist, but I didn't want to pressure her. 
Well, we can find a way to stop him. Come on, you can live in my base with me. We should be safe there. On days four to five, the squirrel and I had made it to the beach closest to my base. That's when I realized she wasn't going to be able to live underwater with me. But I had an idea. By the way, what's your name? My friends call me Sandy. Sandy it is. Could you give me a hand collecting some sand? I know just the thing to build for you. Sandy and I spent some time gathering sand for me to use in the build. With all the sand collected, I loaded it into the furnace and started smelting it into glass. Just because she's a squirrel doesn't mean she can't live under the ocean. With the glass complete, I got to work on building her a house. My idea was to use the glass to create a dome on the seafloor that could then be filled with air for her to breathe. That way, she could live safely underwater, but still feel like she was living freely above ground. It was tricky working underwater, but in the end, I was able to get it to work. I think Sandy is going to love it. After telling Sandy I was done with her base, I hopped into the water and was suddenly attacked by a colossal squid. Oh no, Zozo, let me help. It's okay, I don't want you to get trapped underwater. I can take this guy. The squid was crazy strong. He hit hard, which was scary because I only had five hearts. I needed to do something fast. This is gonna hurt. I aimed for the squid's eye and landed a blow with my sword. That did the trick, and he was destroyed. Nice going, Zozo. What's that? I took a closer look and saw the giant squid had dropped something. This must have been trapped in his stomach. I went over and picked it up. Oh, awesome. It's a pile of sand. If I throw this at an enemy, it will cause them to have temporary blindness. You know, this attack got me thinking. We need something to scare people and animals away from our base. I've got an idea, but I need to check some things first to see if it will work. Stay tuned. On day six to eight, I was on the beach when I started feeling really really hungry. Sheesh, it's been a while since I've had something to eat. I need to work on a food source. I decided that since my favorite food was meat, my best bet was to round up some different animals and keep them up on the shore. I set up a few different pens so I could keep all the animals I was going to collect in one place. With the pen set up, I made my way across the land and managed to find some sheep, some chickens, some pigs, and some cows. I led them all back towards the pen and got all of them locked up in their pens. As I was finishing up, I heard something in the distance. What's that sound? I looked towards the source of the sound. A couple of deer came running out of the trees. You need to run! He's coming! He's coming! You guys are talking animals! It must be the scientist! A moment later, I saw what was coming. It was the scientist! He was in a giant net firing machine! As the deer ran, he managed to capture them with a couple of leads! Oh no, I've gotta help! I grabbed my pile of sand. Maybe this could help me. As I got closer to the scientist, he saw me. You again! You're the one I want most of all! He turned and started shooting at me. I tried throwing some sand at him as I made my way into the trees to try and throw him off. Hey, where did you go? The scientist drove through the trees looking for me, but couldn't see me hiding behind the tree. He seemed to be giving up. Well, at least I can capture you two. He was gonna leave with the deer. I had to stop him. I pulled out my pile of sand, then jumped next to the scientist. You didn't see this one coming. I threw the sand and got him right in the eyes. Ah, what did you do? I can't see a thing. The scientist kept trying to throw nets at me, but couldn't hit me. But in his rage, the deer had broken free. He was still too strong for me to fight, so I hurried and ran toward my base as the deer escaped into the forest. The scientist got way too close to my base. I better hide out for the night. On days 9 to 11, I returned back to my base to talk to Sandy. I told her everything that had happened with the scientist and that I had barely managed to escape. It's okay, Zozo. We'll find a way to beat him and save everyone. I don't know. I just feel like he's so much stronger than us and he keeps making new upgraded weapons. Weapons we couldn't even beat in the first place. If we don't have hope, what do we have? Giving up isn't going to solve the problem, so we have to keep fighting. I suppose you're right. By the way, what was your idea for scaring enemies away from our base? That seems like just the thing we need right now. Oh yeah, I just finished gathering everything I needed for the first part. Come give me a hand. Sandy and I headed out and got to work. Sandy said she had spent the day getting supplies, and using those supplies, we'd be able to build a huge, terrifying statue. She wanted it to be a surprise though, so she didn't tell me what we were building, just where I needed to put the blocks. After a while, we had finished the first part. This is looking great, I think. Can you tell what it is? After a lot of building, Sandy and I were starting to feel pretty hungry, so Sandy suggested we build a farm. We got working on it right away. I had collected the animals for a food source, but since Sandy Sandy was a squirrel, she didn't eat meat. By the time we had finished building, Sandy's hunger was getting dangerously low. Hurry and plant the crops. I don't think I should risk moving too much. My hunger bar is getting really low. Oh no, I only got enough plants to lure the animals into their pens. I'll go get some for you. It's okay, but please hurry. On days 12 to 13, I was exploring the land looking for seeds when I came across a small farm. A garden. This will have just what Sandy needs. But who lives here? Next to the garden was a small hut, so I went to knock on the door. I'm sure they wouldn't mind if I just took a little bit of the crops. But to my surprise, the door opened opened, and a scientist was standing in the door. Oh no, another scientist. I gotta get out of here. I turned to run when the scientist called out to me. Whoa there, hang on little fella. I'm not gonna hurt you. I stopped running and turned cautiously toward her. How do I know you're not going to hurt me? I guess you don't, but I can tell by your face that you really need these crops. Come on in and let's talk. I think I can actually be of more help than you think. 
She was right. Sandy's hunger levels were too low for me to risk wasting time looking for another food source. I headed inside the hut. So you have something that can help me? I do. Information. I think it's important that you understand who that scientist is. That way, you can defeat him. Alright, I'm listening. Who is this guy? The scientist used to be a co-worker of mine. We spent years working on potions and inventions that would improve the lives of the animals around us. In our studies, we had discovered some animals possessed special abilities. Most of the time, it was that they could talk. But every so often, one would come along that was capable of even greater power. One day, though, his wife disappeared, sending him into a spiral. He was on a path I couldn't follow, so I ran away. The scientist blamed the animals for what had happened to his wife, and he became obsessed with harvesting them and using their power to build a super weapon, one that would give him ultimate control over everyone. Any animals he extracts power from die in the process. He is powerful for sure, but one of the rare animals, one that possesses extraordinary abilities can stop him. Zozo, you are one of those animals. Me? I don't have any special abilities. I can hardly win any fights, and the last time I met up with the scientist, I barely made it out alive. There's no way you could be right about that. I know it, Zozo. I do. You might not see it now, but I'm sure one day you will. I'm standing by and I'm ready to help how I can. Hang on to this radio and give me a call if you ever need help. I picked up the radio, then she led me outside to the garden. And here, you can take some peanuts from my garden. I harvested some plants and peanuts, then left to head back to the base. Special powers? Maybe she knew something I didn't, but right now it just didn't make any sense. From days 14 to 15, I was making my way back to the base when I heard a familiar but terrifying sound above me. I looked up and couldn't believe what I was seeing. Oh no, it's that bird again! And this time, it has some of its babies with it. I didn't want to be there breakfast before, and I didn't want to now. I still had a little bit of sand left over from my fight with the scientist. Maybe it could help me win here. Come and get it! The bird let out a screech, but I was ready. I took my pile of sand and threw it right in its eyes. The bird let out another yell and landed not too far away. Here, I've got some breakfast for ya. I took my sword and quickly started to attack the bird. Since it was on the ground, it had no chance, and I was able to knock it out. That was one down, but I still had to deal with the kids. And now I was all out of sand. Come on down, kids. I've got some leftovers for you. The baby birds shrieked and dove down as well. They weren't nearly as strong or clever as the big bird, and so one by one, they flew straight into my swinging blade, taking them down for good. Flying is overrated. Swimming is the way to go. Suddenly, I felt energy beginning to course through my veins, and I evolved into a bigger Godzilla. Check it out. I even have ten hearts. I was feeling much stronger than before, and found out that my roar could hurt enemies. My tail had become a weapon of its own too. On days 16 through 19, I made it back to the base and was grateful to see that Sandy was still alive. I gave her something to eat and then headed into the farm to plant the seeds so she'd have a renewable source of food as well. Just as I was finishing up, Sandy came running into the room. Zozo, come quick. I need your help. Sandy led me to another part of the base where she had started mining down into the earth. While you were planting the farm, I went ahead and started working on a mine. I had mined into a cave system where there was some iron, but something attacked me. I didn't get a good look at what it was, but I was wondering if you could go check it out. Sure thing. Sandy. I'll see what I can find. I headed down into the tunnel and soon emerged in the cave. I could see the iron Sandy had mentioned and walked over to it. Just then, a group of drowned attacked. Oof, these guys. This is a good chance to put my new abilities to the test. I quickly swung my tail and knocked them away from me. With them backed off, I then hit them with my roar attack, which hurt them from afar. Oh sorry, were you guys going somewhere? I then hopped in with my sword and started slashing away. I continued to use my new abilities in combination with my sword and was able to defeat them in no time. Well, with those guys out of the way, I might as well grab this iron. I then took out my pick and my mined out all the iron I could find. With all the iron collected, I made my way back up to the base, where I smelted down all of the iron and then used it to make a full set of iron armor and tools. On days 20 to 22, I was woken up by the sound of a crackle on my radio. I tuned the frequency to get a clearer sound. Zozo, do you copy? Zozo, do you read me? Hey, yes, I'm here. What's going on? The mad scientist is heading your way. You're in danger. Oh, no, it's okay. My whole base is underwater. He's not going to be able to reach me here. You don't understand. He built a mech suit that will let him access your base. You need to get out of there. Now! I heard hurried out of my base and swam up to the surface. I couldn't risk him getting into the base and hurting Sandy. I made my way to the beach. Maybe I could cut him off here. Just then, I saw the scientist approaching. The old woman was right. He was in an aquatic mech suit. I'm stronger now. I think I can take him. Soon, the scientist was before me. Ho oh, ho ho, someone's been eating their veggies. You're even more valuable to me now. This has to stop. You're killing innocent animals. Oh, boo hoo. You don't even know what you are. You have a power inside of you just waiting to burst out, and I'm gonna get it. The scientist revved his suit and fired a laser at me. I ran into the water to get some space between us. Before he could get me again, though, I let out a roar, which hurt him. I jumped closer and hit him with my tail, which seemed to put a dent in his machine. He didn't stay scared for long, though, and kept fighting back. What is this power? Ooh, you're even stronger than you look. He kept firing his laser beam at me, which really hurt. I had more health and armor than before, but I was taking some serious damage. You can't win, Zozo. You're mine. I rose up and swung with all my might, which caused his suit to start smoking. I swung 
going again and again. I was winning. Whoa, where is the strength coming from? I can't lose. Before I could deliver the final blow, the scientist hit a button, ejecting him from his suit and launching him into the air. This is it over. The scientist was gone for now. But if there was one thing I did learn, it's that the scientist isn't invincible. Next time we meet up, I'll be ready. On days 23 to 25, Sandy came and found me in my room. She suggested that we go search the wreckage of the scientist's machine. Maybe we'd find something. We headed up to the surface and took a look at where the scientist's machine had been destroyed. It looked like there was something in the wreckage. What's this? I picked it up and saw it was a stack of javelins. Oh, interesting. This will give me the chance to do some ranged attacks. I kept looking and saw that there was a notebook as well. I wonder what's inside. I picked it up and opened it up. If you were liking this video so far, please like and subscribe and leave a comment on what adventure you think we should go on next. Hmm, I don't know what that means. On days 26 to 29, Sandy and I headed back to the base to get some work done on the statue. I was pretty exhausted from the fight, so we thought this would be a good activity to take our minds off the conflict. It was coming along pretty well, I think. Can you tell what it is yet? We stopped working as Sandy explained to me that we were going to need some amber blocks and warped stems to get more work done. She suggested I head to a nearby island, as she heard I might be able to find some there. I'm on it. I leapt into the water and started swimming off in the direction Sandy had mentioned. In my bigger form, swimming was much faster than before. As I approached the island, I noticed something was already here. I reached the shore and saw it was infested with green snakes. If you guys don't mind, I'm just gonna squeeze by and grab what I need. Thanks. I made my way over to the blocks I needed and started mining them out. I was able to grab a bunch of them when I was suddenly attacked by the snakes. Ah, guys, I just needed a little bit. These guys weren't talkers though, and they started biting and snapping at me with their fangs. Hey, that hurts. Knock it off. I smacked some of them away and then used some of the new javelins I had just gotten to keep them at a distance. By this combo, I managed to take them all out. Alrighty, back to business. I had gotten all of the blocks I needed, so I jumped back into the water to head at home. On days 30 to 35, I was heading back to my base when I was suddenly attacked by a shark. Whoa, get out of here, you man-eater. The shark had a powerful bite, and it was doing a lot of damage, but he didn't know who he was messing with. Let's see how you like this. As the shark lined up to charge me, I pulled out my javelins and speared him. Turns out he didn't like it at all. He was hurt, but lined up to charge at me again. Suddenly, he turned and swam off in the other direction. Yeah, that's what I thought. You better run. I turned to keep swimming, but saw what made the shark swim off. There was a huge whale right behind me. Oh boy, please don't eat me. Eat you? You don't look very good to eat. Oh, you talk. In that case, nice to meet you. Likewise. Say, I've been watching you fight. You're one brave guy. Do you think you could help me? This evil scientist captured my baby, and I need someone to rescue her. Oh yeah, I'm well acquainted with this scientist. Do you know where she's being held? I'll do anything to stop that guy. There's a holding pin not too far from here. I would go there myself, but my lack of arms stopped me from breaking through anything. It's actually pretty inconvenient. Don't you worry. I'll get there as fast as I can. On days 36 to 40, I made my way to the holding pen. After a bit of swimming, I could see the enclosure. This must be it. I snuck in a little closer and could see that the holding pen was attached to what looked like a small base. There were several guards on the outside. Well, I'd like to avoid confronting them directly if possible. Let me see if I can get in contact with the baby whale. I hopped back into the water and swam over to the pen. I could see the baby whale inside. Hey there, little one. Your dad sent me to rescue you. I'm so happy to see you. I don't know how much time I have. There used to be a lot more animals in here with me, but one by one, they were taken away and haven't come back. We're the only ones left. Okay, hang on for as long as you can. I noticed there were a lot of guards out there, and I don't want to risk fighting all of them. Do you know if there's another way in? I think there might be a water duck you can break into that leads into the enclosure. If you dig into the side of the hill on the east side of the base, you should hit it. Or was it the north side? I can't remember. It's okay. I'm sure I can figure it out. I'll start digging and I'll see you soon. From days 41 to 43, I worked on digging my tunnel through the base. I feel like this is going great. I've got to be getting close. I think she was saying I need to start digging up right about now. I changed direction and started heading up. This was kind of a nice change to not be attacked head on. I felt like a proper secret agent. Suddenly, I burst through the surface and saw I was right in the middle of their base. Uh-oh, looks like I'm not a very good secret agent. I jumped out of the hole and the guards swarmed in and started to attack. There were more guys in here than I thought. They had caught me off guard and were really Really starting to take down my health. Oh, there's so many of them. But I still had my special moves. I let out a roar and was able to hurt some of the bad guys. I quickly started swinging my tail and hitting back. One by one, I was starting to take them out. There were so many of them, but I was a one monster wrecking machine. Maybe I do make a better action star than Secret Agent. Eventually, I was able to gain the upper hand and the entire base was clear. In one of the rooms, I saw a control panel with a couple of switches on it. I went ahead and flipped them. This must be controlling the gate. All right, let's go save those animals. I made my way out of the main base and headed toward the holding tank. I went around to the exit to make sure the whale got out safely. Go on and be free, my friend. Just then, the big whale dad from before came swimming up as his daughter swam over to him. Thank you, Zozo. I was afraid I would never see my daughter again. If you are ever in need of help, I will do everything I can to be there for you. 
On days 44 to 49, I had arrived back at my base. I had nearly forgotten I had collected materials for my statue, so Sandy and I had gotten right to work building the next part. I think I'm starting to see what it's supposed to be. What about you? Next, I got to work building some guard towers above my base. If my run-ins with the scientists thus far had taught me anything, it was that I needed to be prepared for any kind of attack. Once the towers were complete, I decided to give them a test. That night, I lured some mobs into the area and led them right into my trap. The defenses worked perfectly. The scientist is going to be in for a nasty surprise if he tries to break in here. On days 50 to 53, I woke up to the sound of a crackle on the radio. It was another warning call that the scientist was coming. Again? Good thing we laid those traps. He's not going to be able to get in this time. I swam to the top of the base to get a better look and saw it wasn't just the scientist attacking this time. He was standing in a helicopter with a squadron of robot sharks in the water. I might not be able to swim in, but my elite shark squad can. Alpha team, attack! The sharks immediately jumped into action. They were headed right for the base. I braced myself for a fight. The first few sharks got caught in the crossfire of my guard towers, which quickly took them out. Nice! Those worked perfectly. The next few sharks were much luckier though, and I was going to have to take them on myself. The sharks were putting up a good fight, but they were no match for my claws and sword. I also used my roar and spin attack, cutting through them bit by bit. With all of my attacks, I was able to rip through them and quickly took them out. Ha! Huh, this guy must be running out of ideas. Suddenly, I heard an explosion and saw some other robot sharks had blown a hole in Sandy's dome. A shark swam in, tied her up, and pulled her away. Zozo, help! They were taking Sandy. In my anger, my blood started to boil, and I could feel a rush of energy. Suddenly, I grew in size and leveled up. The scientist had gotten his hands on the rope and pulled Sandy into the helicopter. I started making my way toward them, but the scientist took out a rocket launcher, blowing up one of the towers. Say goodbye to your little friend. The scientist fired up his engine and flew off with Sandy. I was so mad. There were a couple of robot sharks nearby, and in my rage, I opened my mouth and shot out a stream of fire. This must be one of my new abilities. The fire destroyed them almost immediately. I've got to get Sandy back. On days 54 to 57, I was in the depths of despair. First things first though, I started to make repairs to the base. I couldn't believe I didn't protect Sandy from the scientist. She trusted me and I let her down. And I had no idea where the scientist's main base was. Then I had an idea. I headed over to the radio. Hey, are you there? Sandy was captured by the scientist and I really need your help. Zozo, I was just about to contact you. We have something to discuss, but I think it's best done in person. I'll be there soon. I departed my base and headed to the old woman's house. When I arrived, she was waiting for me outside. Zozo. Zozo, thank you for coming. Of course, what's going on? I lied to you earlier. The scientist's wife, she didn't die. I'm his wife. What? Why didn't you say so before? I was afraid the truth would be too much for you and make you refuse to work with me. So why are you telling me now? How can I know anything you've told me is true? Everything else I have told you is true, but there is more to the story. My husband was a brilliant man, but we were under pressure to deliver our findings by a corrupt mayor of the nearby city. We were his prisoners, and the experience turned my husband to madness. I believe there is still good in him. So what are you suggesting? I know you must hate him, but please don't hurt him. I think he can come back to the light. No promises, but I'll see what I can do. Rescuing Sandy is my number one priority. She thanked me and told me the location to the scientist's base. It wasn't going to be easy to infiltrate, so I needed to head back to my base to prepare. On days 58 to 62, I returned back to my base and headed into the mine. I was still using subpar gear and was hoping to find some diamonds. I was still sad about Sandy being gone, but I needed to stay focused. After a bit of exploring, I soon saw diamonds. Just what I was looking for. I mined all of the diamonds I needed, but as I went further into the cave, there was some lava blocking my path. Just then, I heard a roar behind me and saw a black bear had me cornered, but I wasn't worried. Impressive, but I can roar too. I opened my mouth and fired my fire breath at him. He didn't like that at all, and attacked. I can go claw to claw with you, no problem. The bear swiped at me as I fought back. He was strong, but he didn't know what he was getting himself into. We exchanged blows as I shot him with my fire breath. After a bit, I took him out with ease. With my pockets full of diamonds, I headed back up into the base and got to work crafting. In no time, I had crafted myself a full set of diamond armor and equipped it. I'd like to see anyone try and pierce this armor. On day 63 to 66, I got back to work on the statue. Sandy wasn't around to tell me what we were building, but I felt like I had a good idea of where we were going with it. I would have loved to finish it, but it didn't feel right to do it without Sandy, so I decided to wait a little bit longer so we could finish it together. I'm all ready to go, but before I do, I'm told there's a red sub button you can press. The more subs we have in our navy, the stronger we'll be. On day 67 to 70, I left my base and traveled across the land toward the scientist's headquarters. After a while, I saw some buildings beginning to appear on the horizon. That must be it. I had no idea there was such a large city nearby. As I got closer to the base, I saw it was well protected, with guards positioned all over the outside of the base. It didn't matter though. I was angry, and no one was going to keep me out. Sandy, I'm coming for you. I ran up to the guards and started to attack as the guards took aim and started to fire. These guys were elite troops and I could feel the strength of their shots, but so far, my armor was holding up. 
Where's the scientist? The guards didn't seem interested in my questions and kept attacking. I was making my way through the guards, using every attack in my arsenal. The place was starting to catch fire, but soon enough, I cleared out all of the guards. Time to get in there and see what's going on. On day 71 to 74, I entered further into the base, attacking more guards along the way. There were a bunch of them stationed in the lobby, but as much as they tried to take me down, they stood no chance against my flurry of attacks. Once they were all destroyed, I entered the next room, which was full of animals and cages. Don't worry guys, I'll get you out. I quickly attacked all of the guards in the room. They really didn't seem to appreciate my fire breath. Soon enough, I had taken them all out. I then headed over to the wall and pressed a button, which released them all from their cages. Be free, my friends. Just then, I saw a bear had started attacking another animal. That's when I noticed he was a robot bear. Oh no! I quickly ran over and started fighting him, taking him out as quick as I could. But there were some robot ducks that had started attacking me too. How could the scientists do this to the animals? I managed to fight them all off too. I've got to find Sandy, and quick! I headed into another room and saw a few more animals in cages. I was careful to check and be sure they weren't robots before breaking them out. I took out some more guards and then saw a strange object floating over a block. What could this be? I stepped closer and picked it up. It was a new whirlwind attack. Oh cool, I can't wait to test this out. Just then, another group of robot animals appeared, and I was shocked by who was leading them. Sandy, what have they done to you? The group of animals attacked, including Sandy. It was no use. It wasn't the Sandy I knew and loved. She had been experimented on and turned into a robot. I focused on fighting off the other animals, but I couldn't bring myself to fight Sandy. I was able to take a few of them out, but what was I gonna do about Sandy? Sandy, it's me. I was so distracted trying to run away, I didn't notice that more guards had come into the room. They immediately started to attack me. This was a fight I couldn't win. They cornered me against a wall and then shot me with a tranquilizer dart, putting me to sleep. On day 75 to 78, I woke up in a cage. I've got to get out of here. I looked for my pickaxe, but they must have taken it from me. There was no way for me to break myself out. Hehehehe, <laughs> going somewhere? I made this cage especially for you. You'll never be able to break out. You can do whatever you want. Just let Sandy go. As I said this, I noticed that Sandy turned and looked at me. Ooh, do you feel sad for your friend? Boo hoo. I'll tell you what, maybe I won't destroy you. Maybe I'll just turn you into a robot, just like her. Then you can play with your little friend all day. <laughs> You're gonna pay for this. It doesn't matter what you do. Good always triumphs over evil. As I said this, Sandy started to shake and her circuit started to make a crackling noise. Zo's out. The scientist turned and looked at her. What? She's overpowering the mind control. Suddenly, Sandy ran over to the cage release and hit the button, freeing me from my cage. You're in for it now. Ah, oh no! The scientist ran out of the room. Before I chased after him though, I took a look at Sandy. Go Zozo, the mind control is taking back over. I don't want to fight. Without wasting another moment, I took off after the scientist. He hadn't gotten very far, as he had just run into the other room. But that's because he managed to get himself into a fancy mech suit. Enough games. I'm going to end this now. The scientist attacked. His weapon was way stronger than I was expecting, but I was way stronger than even he knew. I hit him with everything I had. I used my weapons, swung my tail, and shot him with my fire breath. So much strength! You would make me invincible! The scientist fought right back, using every method he could to make sure I really felt it. He fired his weapons and was able to move quickly around the room. At one point, I was down to just a few hearts. Time to say goodbye! Just then, I noticed he was standing next to some TNT. Goodbye! I shot my fire breath and hit the TNT, which knocked him out of his suit. He slumped down against the wall. No, I must complete my mission. Just then, I noticed a control panel on the other side of the room, labeled Mind Control. This can free Sandy. I hurried over to the switch and flipped it. To my surprise, I heard a crackling sound and saw it was coming from the scientist. He had been under Mind Control. Zozo, thank you. I'm so sorry. Who did this to you? It was the mayor. He told me he would destroy my wife if I didn't keep working for him. I refused, but he did this to me and forced me to comply. I'm just glad she got away. It's not too late. I can get you a health potion or something. No, it is too late for me. I'm allergic to potions. I know, it's really inconvenient. Tell my wife I'm sorry. He put his head down and was gone. I'll tell her. I'm sorry things couldn't have been different. I'll find the evil mayor and make things right. On day 79 to 84, I headed back to the other room to find Sandy. I was on my way back when she found me. Zozo, my mind has been free. You must have defeated the scientist. I explained to Sandy everything that had happened, including that the scientist wasn't really the bad guy. It was the mayor this whole time. Oh no. Well, let's take a look around here. The scientist was working on a weapon. We better find it and destroy it. Sandy and I took off, taking
taking a look around the base. I noticed that the base was empty now. The guards must have been under mind control too. As we walked into one of the rooms, we saw a strange glowing object floating on a platform. Sandy picked it up and set it down in front of me so I could take a closer look too. It doesn't look like a weapon, but it definitely looks like something powerful. What do you think, Sandy? But before Sandy can answer, a man in a suit came strolling into the room, stopping in front of the glowing object. This had to be the mayor. Yeah, you two certainly tried, but I'm sorry to tell you, you failed. That nerd had pretty much finished the weapon, and there's nothing you losers can do about it. The people of this city tried to kick me out of my job, but I'll show them who the top dog is. The mayor picked up the glowing weapon. There was a blinding light, and as the light faded, we could see he had turned into a mecha godzilla. He was as big as a building. Ha ha ha! Good luck stopping me now! The mayor turned and headed toward the city, breaking everything in his path. Suddenly, he began shooting lasers out of his eyes as he smashed the buildings. This is what happens to those who dare oppose me. You citizens can cower in your buildings all you want. I will find you and I will destroy this entire city. <laughs> Come on, Sandy, let's get out of here. He's way too strong. He'll crush us. On days 85 to 89, Sandy and I arrived back at our base. It was good to have her back home, but I was still feeling like a failure. I feel like I can't do anything right. I couldn't save the scientist, and the mayor got his hands on the weapon. Now thousands of people are going to die. You can't be so hard on yourself, Zozo. The fight isn't over. It's not much, but they should help. I sold them from the lab. Sandy tossed out a few bars of netherite. Thanks, Sandy. I can max out my gear with this. And you know what? Now that you're back, we should finish our statue. It only feels right. I made a quick stop at an anvil and used it to upgrade all my gear to netherite. It made me feel a little bit better knowing I would be fully protected. I then met Sandy out at the statue and we got to work finishing it up. Doing so was helping me come out of my slump. I still didn't know how we could defeat the mayor, but my confidence was increasing. There was just one more thing I had to do. But before moving to that, we finished the statue. So what do you think? Did you guess what it was? No sailor is going to feel safe coming near our base with this. Next up, I headed off to the old woman's house. Unfortunately, I only had the bad news of her husband's death to share with her. She greeted me outside. I can tell by your face you have bad news for me. It's okay. I'm sure you did your best. I think it's important that you know the truth. Your husband was forced to do all this work after being put under mind control by the mayor. In his final moments, he was himself and wanted me to tell you he was sorry. I could see that there were tears in her eyes. Thank you for coming and telling me. I should have known that mayor was behind everything. I explained to her the situation and how the mayor was currently on a rampage in the city. The mention of that seemed to shock her. He, he used it? While you have been gone, I've been researching why my husband was so focused on capturing you. I couldn't quite figure it out, but I'm positive that the weapon wouldn't have been safe for someone to use without your power added to it. Well, it certainly seemed to work just fine, regardless of any power I have. He seems to be pretty strong himself. Just then, she perked up with an idea. You know, if there's one thing I knew about my husband, husband, it's that he was incredibly thorough in his work. He never completed a project without having a backup. But Sandy and I searched all over the base and didn't see anything like what we found. Is there another lab somewhere out there? Just then, I remembered. The other pen where the baby whale was being kept. There could be something there. On days 90 to 94, I arrived back at the pen where the baby whale had been kept captive. The base was completely empty now, except that it had been overrun by charged creepers. Oh, stay away from me! I managed to fight through the mobs and make my way into the base. Inside the base, there were some skeletons, and they started firing their bows at me. Get your airheads out of here. I managed to hit them with fire breath and fight through them. As I searched the base, I had to keep fighting my way through the mobs. After I had destroyed them, I noticed there was a switch hiding behind one of the columns. Hmm, what does this do? I flipped the switch and a secret door opened up. I got closer to see what was hanging on the wall. There it is, a backup of the weapon. I stepped forward and picked it up, taking special care not to activate it. I better hurry and get this back to my base. On days 95 to 96, I returned back to my base and met up with Sandy. Sandy, I found the backup of the weapon. What do you think we should do with it? Oh wow, nice work. I think it's clear, don't you? I agree. You should take it. You'll be the biggest squirrel the world has ever seen. Well, I'm sure everyone would want to see that. You know it has to be you. Everything you have done has led you to this moment. You were made to save the city. Well, I can certainly try my best. I wish we knew more about this, though. So many animals had to die for this to be made. And so many more animals and people will die if the mayor isn't stopped. They'd want their sacrifice to be for someone who would save others, not hurt them. I nodded. Sandy always knew just what to say. In here. I managed to catch something that will help you. Sandy tossed out several enchanted books. These will be perfect. Thanks, Sandy. I grabbed the books and headed over to the anvil. By using all of the books, I was able to give my weapons and armor some impressive upgrades. I couldn't have been more powered up. It's time to end this. On days 97 to 98, Sandy and I swam back up to the shore near our base. This is it, the final battle. If I don't win here, that's it for me. If you've been enjoying the journey so far, let me know by giving me a like and a sub. I promise to always fight my hardest to win. With that said, Sandy and I headed 
headed in the direction of the city. The mayor wasn't going to see this coming. On day 99, we ran up to the outskirts of the city. In the distance, we could see the mayor standing amongst the buildings. So much destruction. I can see now that the mayor has lost control of his own mind. Seeing him like that scared me. Is that going to happen to me too? Do you remember what happened when you were fighting the scientists? The power of our friendship pulled me out of the mind control. This is the same tech. I won't let anything happen to you. I trust you, Sandy. Let's finish what we started. I moved into the city and got as close as I could get to the mayor without putting myself in danger. Hey, mayor! Why don't you pick on someone your own size. The mayor turned to look at me. I pulled out the secret weapon and activated it. There was a flash of light and I started to grow. It felt strange, but I could feel the power coursing through me. I couldn't help but feel like this was part of my destiny all along. How is this possible? That scientist, you betrayed me. I waited for the madness to take over, but nothing happened. Just then, it clicked. The scientist needed my power to stabilize the mind of the weapon's user, but since I was the user, all it did was power me up. Your reign of terror is over. The people of this city deserve better. The mayor and I charged at each other, exchanging blows. The mayor was strong, but with my new power, I had never felt better. You think this makes you special? You can't save anyone. You couldn't save the scientist, let alone an entire city. His words hurt, but I knew the scientist would have wanted me to stop this mayor. If not for you, no one would have needed to be saved. No one would have ever gotten hurt. The scientist saw you for who you really were, a fraud. This made the mayor even more mad, and he unleashed a flurry of attacks, which nearly took down all of my health. I had to finish this. I took one big final breath and unleashed the most powerful fire blast I had ever created. No! The mayor crumbled to the ground and disappeared. I rushed back over to Sandy. Zozo, you did it. Let's go home. On day 100, we returned back to the base. I was too big to fit in the base, but Sandy said she was going to keep living there anyway. I had gotten used to living in the water, so I swam back down into the sea. If the people of the city ever needed me again, they'd know just where to find me.